Welcome back, everybody. I uh, hope you had a good one. Okay, most of us are back. Right. Okay, uh, let's continue uh, with the lesson. We're in page 49. Okay, page 49. What we've covered so far uh, is, is from, from page 47. We've covered auditions, uh, why we hold auditions and the audition process at APC and the rostering process of the worship team members, uh, that message that goes out and then how we expect our worship teams and um, worship, uh, indiv uh, worship team members individually to prepare for the worship service through the week. Okay, uh, that's what we learned in the last session. And now we continue. Um, with what goes on okay uh, so that's three section 3.5 we see reviews and feedback one of the key things that happens uh, after the worship service is evaluating each worship service okay evaluating each worship service so um, and most often uh, you would see the worship team members at APC after the service is finished uh, you know there's there's uh, a huddle right on stage uh, you know, and then we ask these questions. Okay, this is how we review and give feedback. Okay, we ask these questions. Did we encounter God's presence as we played together? Did we learn anything new about the Spirit of God? Okay, as he as he leads us. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah, but you all have the notes, right? <laughs> okay. Here we go. Um, so these are the questions that we ask, right? Uh, to for review and feedback. Did we uh, encounter God's presence as we played together? Did we learn anything new about the Spirit of God? Uh, you know, leading us during worship. Uh, did the congregation recognize and encounter God's presence? Did we play well together as a worship team? Where did we not do well? And what corrective measures need to be taken to improve? Okay, uh, so all of these questions, uh, each of the individuals in the worship team will take time to give their, uh, to voice out their feedback, their reviews, uh, and then you know we keep growing. Okay, next time we get better. If, if something did not go well, something was missing, we discuss about that and we make we make we try to uh, and make sure that doesn't uh, happen again. Okay, uh, so this is very essential, guys. Uh, review and feedback, asking these questions. Um, now you don't need to have uh, you know you need to ask the same questions or whatnot, uh, but you can if you want to. But then. What is important is the principle of reviews and feedback. Evaluating each worship service is very, very essential for us to improve and grow um, as a worship ministry, as a team, okay? Uh, the next section is worship ministry developmental plan. Okay, uh, what is uh, the plan to develop the worship ministry at APC? Um, so the first section is trainings. Okay, we, we host training section, uh, sessions. Uh, what do we do uh, differently in different ways is one, we have a worship team retreat. Okay, WT is worship team. Worship team retreat. Um, there will be an annual off-site retreat. Uh, this will be a time of spiritual refreshing, fellowship, and training. Okay, this will be a time of spiritual refreshing, fellowship, and training uh, training sessions uh, there will also be a regular informal and formal training sessions uh, there will be a time of games just to get uh, you know together there will be training sessions like uh, uh, on songwriting and how to play together as a band what is the role of a guitarist in the worship team and the drummer and there will also be uh, sectional uh, training sessions sectional means uh, all the drummers will go into a one room and just talk about uh, you know 
something about drums or learn something. All the bass guitarists will go to a different place uh, in the retreat center and then just learn about that, uh, about their instrument. And same, similarly with, with all the vocalists, we will either have one of the, uh, one, uh, a professional vocalist from outside, uh, you know, who will come and do like a workshop on singing and, and techniques and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so all of those, uh, make sure it equips the worship team members uh you know that's one of the developmental plan training is very important right um so the worship team retreats either happens once a year or you know twice a year depending uh on on what the year looks like okay or the calendar looks like okay and then we share the vision of the worship ministry okay the vision of apc's worship ministry is to please god's heart in unrestrained worship to encounter his manifest presence and to establish a community of believers who will do the same we keep emphasizing on the vision uh, you cannot communicate this vision enough there is no too much communication of the vision you keep communicating okay until it's ingrained because everybody knows that uh, you know once once that is in line with you you know the vision of apc's worship ministry is uh, to and uh, to please God's in unrestrained worship, to encounter His manifest presence, and then to establish the community of believers who will do the same. Okay, so that is the vision of worship team ministry. That is the developmental plan. Uh, our pursuit, our goal, is to grow APC into a community of passionate worshipers. As a worship ministry, our goal is to encounter God's presence. Okay, what, what we do is not about performance or just excellent music, but about encountering the presence of God. Excellent music in itself does not have life-transforming ability, but a moment in God's presence can change everything. Amen? Excellent music in itself does not have life-transforming ability. Okay, that's that's this kind of reflects back to the point where skill does not make your worship uh, more acceptable, more acceptable, right? Uh, but a moment in God's presence can change everything. So this is our goal. Okay, this is our pursuit. This is what we want to go after. Okay, our goal is simple. It's to encounter the manifest presence of God. It's very simple. That's what we are pursuing together as a team. Okay, so as a team, pursuing God's presence precedes pursuing excellence in skill. Hmm. Okay, as a team, pursuing God's presence precedes, that means it takes priority over pursuing excellence in skill. Okay, so let's just look at this ladder right at the very bottom we see lead congregation in a set of songs okay we play a set of songs uh, uh, could have an excellent band highly skilled focuses uh, on doing the set well and getting people to sing along that's level one okay leading congregation in a set of songs okay play a set of songs uh, play well play excellently, and highly skilled, focuses on doing the set really well, getting the people to sing along. And then you have the next level. Lead congregation to sing to the Lord. Okay, lead congregation to sing to the Lord. So you, here we play a set of songs, encourage congregation to sing to the Lord. Focus is still on good performance, although heart is to sing to the Lord. Okay? Pay attention here, guys. Focus is still on good performance, although heart is to sing to the Lord. Nice. Uh, the third level here is lead congregation to worship the Lord. Here the goal is to do a set of songs well with excellence so that people can offer it as worship unto God. Here the focus is changing a little bit. Focus is on offering something to God. Okay, and then we have the fourth level where occasional experiences of God's presence. Occasional experiences of God's presence. Every once in a while we have God's manifest presence. 
we sense his spirit leading in spontaneous prophetic worship. We then are able to soak in his presence. So now we've moved on from just playing music, wanting to play music well, and singing good songs, singing to God, but the focus is still on music. And then in level three, we see that we are ministering unto the Lord. Focus, our focus is on you know, offering something to God. And that eventually leads to this level four, where we see, we start encountering his manifest presence. We become more sensitive to the leading of his voice, to the leading of his spirit. Okay, and then that doesn't stop there. In uh, what happens once you've get, gotten the taste of that is you go to level five, that you see regular experiences of God's presence. We regularly experience God's manifest presence. It doesn't become a one-time thing or once in a blue moon, it's like, you know, some six months ago, this happened, you know, and whatnot. So we regularly experience God's manifest presence. We flow in prophetic, soak in his presence. Unexpected and un unusual things happen. Healings, encounters, deliverances becomes a very regular thing at this point. And then from there, it still doesn't stop there, is we lead the congregation into the throne room. Now we are, you know, go moving in from the gates to the outer courts, to the inner courts. Uh, you know, from, from just doing, we are now going into the throne room, okay? We are able to step into the throne room. We are overwhelmed by his presence and glory. We are lost in awe and wonder. Okay, we, is this not much happening? Is, is, we are just standing in awe, right? Uh, if you remember the song, uh, I Can Only Imagine, right? uh, such a beautiful song by, uh, by, Mercy, by a band called Mercy Me. Uh, the chorus goes like, um, surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence or to my knees will I fall? Or will I sing hallelujah? Or will I be able to sing at all? Uh, you know, such so beautifully written, isn't it? Uh, so it is at this point, we are just standing in awe. We are lost in the wonder of his grace and of his power and of his mercy and of his goodness. We are just in awe. And then finally, become a habitation of God, his dwelling. Throne room is where we dwell. Or more correctly, God is dwelling amongst us. Whenever we, wherever we worship, we are overwhelmed by God's manifest presence. Okay, so uh, to get to this point, you see, from all the way from point one to the top here, and this can happen with only one thing, and that's with a heart of humility, and the heart that wants to pursue God, want more of Him. All right? Um, I just want to read a couple of uh, two scriptures. Uh, please turn with me, if you will, please, uh, to Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. And then uh, on the other hand, uh, turn to Isaiah chapter 57. Okay, Isaiah chapter 57. Actually, I might also want to read another scripture. Okay. Exodus 33, and if you can, uh, with one of the fingers, um, keep Numbers chapter 12 also ready. Okay, Numbers chapter 12 ready. So first one is Exodus 33, then we will go to Numbers chapter 12, and then we go to Isaiah chapter 57. Okay? Uh, if, you're, if you're ready, just uh, type an amen in the chat. Or I say yes. Okay. 
or should I say turn in your iPhones to this chapter? Okay, here we go. Exodus chapter 33, verse 7 onwards, okay? Verse 7. Exodus 33, verse 7. It says, Now Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp some distance away, calling it the tent of meeting. Anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. So Moses would often discon disconnect to connect with the Lord. That's why it says outside the camp. He was not in the camp. He was not in the camp with all the people surrounding him. No, he would disconnect from all the people. He would go far away, at some distance away, as it says. And he would pitch the tent and call it the tent of meeting. Verse 8, and whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrances of their tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. As Moses went in to the tent, here okay, listen to this, verse 9, as Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. Okay, it's two ways to look at it. It's not Moses speaking with the Lord. Yes, that also happens, but it says the Lord spoke with Moses. The Lord came down. He made his dwelling there in the tent of meeting. He established his throne in the tent of meeting. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, they all stood and worshipped, each at the entrance of his tent. So what is happening here is every time the people of Israel saw the cloud coming down to the tent, they worshipped the Lord. So one of the key things to notice here is because Moses went in as a leader, Moses was their leader, isn't it? Uh, you know, in our context, we are learning about worship leadership, worship ministry and leadership. So if a leader, as an example, he sets his heart on, you know, encountering this God, he makes that, he proactively takes the first step. Then the congregation will see that God's manifest presence and they will respond in worship. That's what's happening here, isn't it? Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tent, entrance of the tent, they all stood and worshipped. Verse 11, pay attention. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks with his friend. I cannot tell you how many times that, that, that has wrecked my heart. Every time I read that, he would speak with him face to face as a man speaks with his friend. Okay, why? What, what was so unique about Moses, right? Um, let's go to Numbers chapter 12 now. Numbers chapter 12. Okay, just the very next book. Are you there? Numbers chapter 12, okay? I hope you are there. Uh, let me read it for us. From verse 1, it says, Miriam who is the sister of Moses, and Aaron, who is the brother of Moses, began to talk against Moses because of his Cushite wife, for he had married a Cushite. Has the Lord spoken only through Moses? They asked. Hasn't he also spoken through us? What is that? Is, isn't that uh, the, that's... Those are the statement of arrogance and pride, isn't it? Isn't it, guys? Yeah, that's just that, those are the statement of arrogance and pride. Uh, has he spoken only through Moses? Hasn't he not spoken through us? See what it says there. And the Lord heard this. Mm. Danger, danger, danger. <laughs> danger, danger, danger. It's like when you're having this fight with your siblings at home and you think your parents are not around 
and then you realize that your parents heard this they're like oh oh we are in trouble then we have a therapy session <laughs> you guys know what i'm talking about right the lord heard this boy are they in trouble verse 3 now moses was a very humble man more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth verse 4 at once the lord said to moses aaron and miriam come out to the tent of meeting all three of you <laughs> he sounds like a proper dad isn't it or the principal of a college or something you know <laughs> all three of you come to my office now <laughs> well, it's an amazing scene that's happening here okay at once the lord said to moses aaron and miriam come out to the tent of meeting all three of you so the three of them came out then the lord came down in a pillar of cloud he stood at the entrance to the tent and summoned aaron and miriam he's asking aaron and miriam come forward when both of them stepped forward he said the lord said listen to my words when a prophet of the lord is among you i reveal myself to him in visions i speak to him in dreams but this is not true of my servant moses he is faithful in all my house with him i speak face to face clearly not in riddles he sees the form of the lord why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant moses isn't that powerful guys right um can i ask this question have you ever had a friend who defends you on your behalf who has defended you on your behalf have you ever had a friend uh, you know who stood on your behalf who defended you against other people or anything yes no maybe and how does that make you feel when someone else defends you you know if you are falsely accused by something you know by someone you know for something that you did not do and then says like no 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 you know i know siddharth you know i know who he is he would he would not have done that and i can vouch for him i know who he is and he does not lie and that should do something to you isn't it that that makes you feel good and so many things at the same time isn't it guys here the lord god he is defending moses he is defending moses this whole section starts off by saying moses was a very humble man more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth and then we read the whole section of how god testifies and defends moses that i speak with him face to face and he sees my form and that is what all this the, the seventh point is all about isn't it becoming a habitation of god his dwelling now let's just quickly look go to isaiah 57 okay isaiah chapter 57 verse 15 Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15 This is what it says right For this is what the high and lofty one says He who lives forever whose name is holy 
I live in a high and holy place. What is it saying? I live, that means I dwell in a high and holy place, but also with him who is contrite and lowly in spirit. That means I also dwell with him who is humble to revive the spirit of the lowly, to revive the heart of the contrite. Okay, this verse tells something that God has two dwelling places. One is his throne in heaven, surrounded by the royal diadem of heaven. It's just humble, in other words, for uh, humility, Siddhar. Okay, uh, well, let me get the dictionary meaning for you. Um, so I'll just put it over here. It says, uh, feeling or expressing remorse at the recognition that one has done something wrong. Okay, that realization of that, uh, you know, like for example, Isaiah's, uh, you know, encounter in Isaiah chapter 6, he encounters God's in, uh, God in his, in his holiness. And then what is Isaiah's response? Is, woe unto me, for I am a man of unclean lips. Right? So that's a contrite heart, uh, a sign of an expression of humility, recognizing that, you know, uh, that God is holy and I am not. Oh, right? Um, so as I was saying, God has two dwelling places. One is his throne in heaven, and the other one is a humble heart, as he says in Isaiah 57, 15. And that's just one last scripture, guys. Can we just go to Isaiah chapter 66 in the same book? Isaiah chapter 66, verse 2. Okay, Isaiah 66, verse 2. The second half of the verse, actually, the first half, it starts off by saying, has not my hand made all these things? So they came into being, declares the Lord. The second half of verse 2 says, this is the one I esteem. This is God talking. This is the one I esteem. He who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. There's another translation that I like. It says, uh, this is the one who I look upon with favor. Okay, this is, he is the one who look up, uh, whom I look upon with favor, the one who is humble and contrite. And the very fact that Numbers chapter 12 says that Moses was humble, uh, the most humble than anyone on the face of the earth, uh, explains his encounters with the Lord, uh, explains his face-to-face -face encounters with the Lord. Are you guys with me? So that is what has happened. That is what happens at this, the seventh level, so to speak, is that we, when we become a habitation of God, when he dwells with us, we are having a face-to-face -face encounter with the Lord in his throne room. Amen. Right? So uh, this is a pursuit as a worship ministry is that is that we would have a humble and a contrite heart. We will look beyond just the songs or just the music or just a 45 minutes of worship set, so to speak. But we would move from there, level one, to all the way here is that we will that we will encounter him in his throne room and have the face-to-face -face encounter. It's, it's almost like a progression of, uh, of the tabernacle of Moses, right? If you remember, there is six steps, even before, you know, from the gate to the, to the brazen altar, laver, uh, to the altar of uh, bread, uh, and the, uh, or the golden lampstand, there's the altar of incense. And the seventh place is the most holy place, the holy of holies. So this is almost like a progression. We, there's an invitation. 
come deeper don't just stay on the outer courts don't just stay here come deeper come deeper come past the brazen uh, laver come past the brazen altar come past the altar of bread come past the altar of the golden lampstand come past the altar of incense come all the way to where i dwell in the most holy of holies okay so that is our pursuit uh, as as a worship ministry um, you know of of apc we want to encourage our team members to come all the way so we can serve the congregation we can drag uh, bring our congregation along with us right it's like that old saying uh, it says you cannot take someone somewhere to a place where you have not been okay can i say that again you cannot take someone somewhere to a place where you have not been. You can only take someone somewhere where you have been, isn't it? And so if you've been here in God's dwelling place, it becomes very easy for you to take another individual there, to lead another individual there. Right, are you guys with me? Any questions, any thoughts that you wanna add? anything okay thank you thank you okay all right okay Aaron uh, all okay yeah okay Thomas all good Neelam Prince okay okay all right so we we move on from page uh, 50 now to the next section uh, so now we've just, you know, looked at our pursuit as a team, as a ministry. Our goal is to grow APC into a community of passionate worshipers, and and that is by that happens by encountering His presence, which leads us all the way to His throne room right here. And then we see. So at present, we may typically be at level three and occasionally visit level four, but our goal is to progress to higher levels in worship. We want our worship on earth to be as it is in heaven. We want our worship to be on earth as it is in heaven. Okay. And the second point is we serve to establish God's blueprint for APC as a local church. Okay. We serve to establish God's blueprint for APC as a local church. So as a worship ministry, we are aligned and are working towards establishing God's blueprint in our lives and in the lives of his people in our local church. Uh, we understand that the local church must be developed in all areas according to God's blueprint. And we work towards making this happen. Okay, uh, we understand that the local church must be developed in all areas according to God's blueprint and we work towards making this happen. Okay, so what is uh, God's blueprint for the local church? Right, so we have the early church, a prototype to follow and, suck, uh, and exceed. So here we have the body of Christ. We represent him and carry out his purposes as a body of christ we represent jesus and carry out his will and as the bride of christ we are in love with our bridegroom we are called to be in love with our bridegroom as the family of god we live as his family here here on earth as a in one fellowship and community and as a house of prayer and worship we continually offer worship and prayer and as the pillar of truth, we uphold truth in, in this world. And as the temple of God, God dwelling among us and his glory revealed through us, we work towards him dwelling in us. And then as God's chosen people, we demonstrate kingdom culture and values. And as his vine and the branch, we, we, we showcase intimacy that births fruitfulness. Okay, we become the imitators of Christ, as, uh, as Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Be imitators of Christ, he says, right? So, uh, and being the vine and the branch is just that. It's just a fruit of being intimate with the Lord. 
as an army, we overthrow the works and the powers of darkness. And his lamp, as his lampstand, our standing before him makes us the light in a dark world. Okay, so this is uh, God's blueprint for the local church. And we work on all of these areas. Okay. Uh, and worship team has a huge role to play, uh, play in this development. All right, let this just sink in, okay? Uh, we serve, the worship ministry uh, serves to establish God's blueprint as a local church. And we, we all have to be aware of this truth. Okay, that is the second section. Okay, guys, are you sure you guys any uh, no questions whatsoever? Okay, all right. Uh, what, what I'd like to do is I, I'll pause here. Um, I'll just stop presenting. Um, okay, I uh, feel like there's been uh, a lot of information, a download of information today. Uh, we'll resume uh, the following content um, in the next class. That's from page 52. We'll resume from next class, okay? Uh, but uh, anything that you want to share, uh, for, so from this two sessions that we covered, uh, what was your key takeaway? If you, if, I mean, if each of you don't mind sharing what your key takeaway was, uh, that will be helpful for all of us in the class and also for students who will be listening later. So, uh, yeah, without taking much time, just uh, go ahead and share what was your key takeaways uh, from, from the two sessions today? Aaron, why don't you start off? Yeah. Sorry, Aaron, could not hear you. Uh, you see. Okay, anybody else want to, wants to go ahead and share? Siddharth? Yeah, for me, I think it's something about, uh, you said like God's throne. First is God's throne in heaven. And second one, it looks in a heart, a humble heart, where he can stay with us. So I think that really, you know, I mean, touched me, like, you know, I just thought about it. You know, the next place where God wants us to stay is in a humble heart, you know, in us. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Siddharth. Thank you for sharing. Uh, yeah. Anybody else? Dave, Kiran. Our, our, our purpose and worship uh, to worship Dave. Always to, uh, it should always be guiding people towards God. Sometimes, right. sometimes we are carried away. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are we, we do what we feel. The important thing is to uh, to bring God's presence and right. to, to, to 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 create the environment well where God's God would dwell, like in the temple. In the days of Old Testament, when, when we could see God's presence, uh, like uh, like God would habitate in the the, the, the tabernacle. So, yeah. that's what are the worship should be for, for me? Yeah, thanks, Dave. Thanks for sharing. Right. Uh, okay, one more person, and we'll close. Anybody else? Friends? Uh, Thomas, Kiran, Kanan.
Okay, guys. Anyways, uh, I mean, I guess uh, nobody wants to share us. It's fine. Uh, all right, I'll stop the recording here. Uh, we'll uh, we'll resume uh, from the next next session. All right.